Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. My name is Matt and this is Imagine Then Make. Many, many videos ago I showed you how I used a real low cost blender as a paper shredder. Well now I've got a whole bunch of papers all stored up. So it's time to do some paper shredding using a blender. So this is just a Hamilton Beach blender, real inexpensive one. I think I got this at Walmart, maybe 20, 25 bucks, something like that. I'm just going to pour some water in here. I'm going to leave this little top off. And I'm going to take my first piece of paper and I'm going to turn it on high speed and okay so that was the smoothie setting high speed smoothie So let's use this strainer into a bucket and we'll see how what this stuff looks like. Let me move the camera. All right, so here's the first batch. You can see it's kind of like pulp. Yes. using the strainer to recover some of the water. I think you can hear it dripping. So I think you can see there isn't anything that's even remotely readable didn't take that long and it requires only a real inexpensive blender which is a whole lot less expensive than a paper shredder.
So this is basically what you get out of the blender. I've just kind of been playing it, playing with it a little bit. You can see that it's still very wet. It would take a while for it to dry if that's what you wanted to have happen. But as I say, there's I can't see any indication that there was even any writing on any of this material, which now looks like paper pulp to me. Well, I just finished up all the paper shredding that I wanted to do using this blender. In the end, I went through a stack of paper that was five to six inches tall, I would say. I'm guessing between two and three reams. So that's quite a few sheets. So as I went through that number of sheets, I wound up using about two gallons of water, approximately, and I generated this much pulp. Now I squeezed all the water that I could out of the pulp, so it would come out of the blender into the strainer. I press on the pulp to try and get as much water out as possible, recover it in this bucket, and then use that water back in the blender again for the next set of sheets. So all of that worked out really well. Now it is kind of messy and it'll probably take a day or two for my plywood bench top to dry out, but that's okay. It did. I did spend the afternoon doing this, so this was a fairly extensive project, um, but I think it was actually faster to go through that number of sheets of paper using the blender as opposed to a traditional paper shredder. Now, it's been my experience with a traditional paper shredder, one that I got locally out of a big box store a couple of years back. There's videos on my channel that kind of documents that whole saga. What I found was as I was running sheets of paper through that paper shredder, eventually the motor would overheat and then the thermal um, cutoff switch would kick in, turning off the motor. And then I'd have to wait a significant amount of time for the motor to cool off enough so I could start using the paper shredder again. I never experienced any kind of a delay like that with the blender. And this is maybe the reason why. After I put in a number of sheets and I could hear the sound that the swirling water was making kind of changed, you could hear the blender was kind of getting bogged down a little bit. So that was my signal to turn the blender off, dump the slurry into the strainer, press the water out to recover, um, to recover the water out of the slurry into this bucket so I could use the water for the next series of sheets. While I was pressing out the water, the blender, of course, was turned off, so it had a chance to cool down. So maybe that contributed. The other thing is that there is a fan underneath uh, on the um, motor shaft, I believe. And I could feel the air being exited in that direction. So I think the fan's job is to circulate air through the motor to try and keep it cool. Now I felt that the exiting air started to get warm, but I would say it never got hot. And like I said, the blender never shut itself off for thermal reasons. So I think it worked out great. Now, one thing that didn't work so great, I found that if I tried to run a piece of paper through that had any sort of plastic like cellophane or bubble wrap or even pieces of tape or maybe even a plastic lamination on the paper, it didn't go through the blender very well. I think the blades just couldn't cut the cut through the plastic. So once again, I could tell that that was happening because the sound that the blender was making changed. So when I heard that sound, I would just turn off the blender, fish off the offending piece of plastic, turn the blender back on, finish the blending, dump the slurry into the strainer and continue on. So I would say that the process worked out very well. And again, I think it was faster to do it with the blender as opposed to a traditional paper shredder because 
the blender never shut off for thermal reasons. It ran whenever I pushed the go button, it started right up. So I think it worked out great. So if you find yourself in a similar situation where you've got a stack of paper and you need to destroy it for privacy reasons, and you don't have a fire pit to burn the paper in, which I do not have, and you don't feel like spending money on a paper shredder, which I already did, and I'm not going to do that again, maybe consider using a blender.